Have you ever seen that movie, Misery? Yeah, uh, yes. with Kathy Bates. With Kathy and, Bates, And, and, yes, and James yes. Conn, he was a, a writer. Yes. And, and, and she held him hostage. Well, that was pretty much my life. Only thing is, That's I didn't get true. my legs broke. She's the judge who gives rules on the law and life. She's intense with common sense. She's Judge Lynn Toller on Divorce Court, where real couples deal with real life. Daryl met his wife, Dana, six years ago on a dating website. Daryl claims that within 10 months, Dana strong-armed him into marrying her on a Hawaiian beach and moved him to Georgia. Two years ago, with his health failing, he escaped to California and never looked back. Dana is about to see her husband for the first time in two years and ask Judge Lynn if their marriage can be saved. I haven't seen my husband for two years. And I want to take him back home to Atlanta, Georgia. We pulled up to the beach. When I got up there, I was like, OK, somebody's getting married today. But I didn't know that somebody was me. And tomorrow on this two-part special session of Divorce Court, has Dana been holding Daryl hostage from his family? When he um, asked about a year later, can I go visit? He's taking 14 medications a day. Can I, said, I go visit? He's got to ask you if he can go see his family? Yes. And how did Daryl pull off his great escape from Dana? When I was finally able to talk to one of my sisters, kept calling, I kept trying to tell them. But every time they would call, she would be on the phone. Okay. And so finally I was able to, to talk a little pig Latin to my baby sister. All this and more on this special two-part session of Divorce Court. All rise. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lynn Toller presiding. You may be seated. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here with Dana Harris and Daryl Carter. You two have been married for five years, but separated the last two. Mrs. Harris, I'm going to go straight to you. Tell me why you're here. I'm here because I haven't seen my husband for two years. And I want to take him back home to Atlanta, Georgia. Let me tell you about our story. We met on an internet website. It was a millionaire's website, but of course, we're not millionaires. And Is we, anybody ever a millionaire on a millionaire's <laughs> website? I think everybody claims, but I don't know. But go ahead. You yes, were on the millionaire's website. From the first time we connected, it was really instant love. We converted back and forth. And uh, we made arrangements for him to come to Atlanta. He is a professional singer and a songwriter. So I had to wait about three months. And when he came, he came to meet my parents and family. They fell in love with Daryl, just like I did. The next time I saw my husband was six months later. I made a trip to Hawaii where he lived. And while I was there, he proposed to me. We got married on the beach Thanksgiving weekend. Now, before you got married, how often were you, how, how long were you in his physical presence? We had only seen each other twice. Twice. Physically, yes, On two separate occasions. Right. Once for how long? 10 days. And once for? I was there for two weeks. Is that an accurate recitation of the story, no, Mr. Carter? I don't Carter? think so, because the, she said the thing about proposal. No, I'm sorry. What you happened? Know, <laughs> we live in two different realities. Dana has a way of, of exaggerating and blowing things up bigger than what they really are. Uh-huh. And God. I didn't want to be a small person, but, um, wow. Have you ever seen that movie, Misery, with, <laughs> with Bateman? Yeah. Yes. Kathy Bates. With Kathy and, Bates. And, and, yes. and James yes. Conn, he was a, a writer. Yes. And, and, and she held him hostage. Well, that was pretty much my life. Only thing is, That's I didn't get true. my legs broke. I object, Your wow. Honor. Wow, 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 wow. I object. Mr. Carter, that's a very, very deep thing to it say. Is. That's, that's... You're saying that Ms. Harris kind of fantasized her way into the relationship with you, is that? Oh, oh, well, Dana has a way of exaggerating everything and blowing it up okay. to fit her okay. needs and, and, and whatever. I, I, I well, what I, did she exaggerate about so far? Well, she said that I proposed. You what did? really happened? I didn't, I never proposed. Well, they, but you really... got married, though. <laughs> yeah. How'd that ha you must have said I do to somebody yeah. at some point. When we went to get married, okay, first of all, we pulled up to the beach. And right. I'm thinking I'm taking her to the beach. But oh I work in God. that I work in that field. So when I got it there, I was like, okay, somebody's getting married today. But I didn't know that somebody was me. Oh 
<laughs> How could that happen? You didn't have a, you have to have a marriage license. Yeah. You have to sign up. You have to go to the clerk's office. Right, but I, I went through all that to go through all the procedures, was, but I wasn't planning on getting married. Why would you go through all because, that with somebody because, and not plan to because marry Because she was forcing, she was pushing, kept pushing the issue on me. I did not know Dana. I only met Dana four days the first time. Or, well, she said Ten. it was a week or whatever it Ten. was. And still at the time that we got together, I did not know her. And that was the whole premise. And the thing is that we never were in a, we never did date. We went right from knowing each other to being married. So Internet, there was no date. hi, how you doing? I do. And that was it. No, we yeah, talked. I remember saying I we do talk. because I, I three times when, a day. You don't remember saying I do? No. There had to be an officiant there. Oh he can't say God. it for you. He must have heard you assent in some yeah. way. When the lady started doing the ceremony, she started doing it in Hawaiian, and I made her stop because I didn't understand that she was putting some, she could have been putting some voodoo or something on me. I didn't know. So I made her stop. And when she stopped and started singing in English. No, Mr. Clark, Mr. Clark. When she stopped and started singing in English, I, I fainted, and she knows, she knows that. You fainted? Yeah, he leaned out. on me. I don't know what he did. I went out. Next thing I know, I'm sitting on this big rock, and my son is calling out my name. Dad, Dad, this is supposed to be the happiest day of your life. You just got married. <laughs> and then I'm coming to and I'm like, I got ma I'm married. When divorce court continues, Judge Lynn is confused by Daryl's assertion that he had no intention of marrying Dana. You gotta fill out a whole piece of paper yes. and everything. Yes. You saying you did that under duress? I don't understand how you got the license. Is your spouse ready to walk out the door, but you want to try and save your marriage? Call toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or visit our website at divorcecourt.com or become a fan at facebook.com slash divorcecourt. Divorce Court is back with the case of Daryl Carter, who claims he was married to Dana under duress. But why did Daryl initiate a pre-wedding letter if he had no intention of marrying Dana? Did you make an exchange of what I like about you and what yes, I don't like about you pieces of paper? Did that yes, happen? Yes, yes, it was initiated by me. What I don't understand is why you got a marriage license. What led up to that? How could you have gotten faked or faded into doing that? Because you can't just show up at a ceremony without a license. Because we had, we had went down to wherever that place was because she kept on me to go down. What was and she so I saying? went to the oh my gosh. Her, everything that, how she wanted to get married and, and I was like, before you get married, you gotta have counseling. You know, because I don't I don't I don't know you. So we are bound to have some kind of clashes or something. And I even asked uh, the a minister, he said, Yes, you have to have some counseling, but we never got any counseling. Went right mm -hmm. to getting married, but I don't know if I got something in my uh <laughs> drink or something. When you walk into the clerks, you got to fill out a whole piece of paper yes. and everything. Yes. You're saying you did that under duress? Did she have a gun on you? Were you? I don't understand. I don't, I don't. Am I missing something? I know that, that part is all no. kind of a blur, no. but I know that I, we did go down and sign some papers, but it was my, my intention were not to get, I wasn't going to get married that week. So you go ahead and tell me your version of the event. You got married on the beach. He says without his consent, you say he actually consented. But from that day forward, what occurred? He did consent, obviously. Um, at that particular point, I went back to Atlanta. I stayed there two weeks after we got married, I guess after I held him at gunpoint. I was there for two weeks. And then he couldn't join me because of his gigs if you recall, and so um, it was like three months later. But in the interim... Six months later. Okay, Daryl. You mean to tell me that you got married and went to different cities? Yes, yes ma'am, we had to because he still was a professional singer-songwriter. He was in contract. Did you guys go on a honeymoon first? No. No, no, we didn't go on a honeymoon. We were going to do things later as time permitted, but we, we didn't have the time. And we were already in Hawaii, so, you know... D well, you were, I don't want to be all in it, but yeah, you were sleeping together after the oh, wedding yes. ceremony. Oh, yes. Oh. Yes, ma'am. We were husband and wife. Okay. My understanding is you two wrote up uh, a what I like about you and what I don't like mm -hmm. about you pieces of paper. Yes, ma'am. Before you got married in order to make sure that you two were a good match. And that is what I have there. 
Is that in fact what you did? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Carter, you you you, well, you seem uh, confused. Yes, because <laughs> the ten things that I love about you. He initiated it, Your Honor. Huh? You initiated. Did you make it an exchange of what I like about you and what yes, I don't like about you? Pieces of paper. Did that yes, happen? Yes, yes. It was initiated by me. Yes. And the by thing you. was, I was trying now, to. Now, why were you doing? Why did you do that? Because I needed to know what it was about her that I liked. Yeah. <laughs> What it was about her that, that I really liked, and I, I tried to search and find it. I liked her relationship with God. I liked that. But only only thing about her relationship with God is that she talks to the Spirit, and the Spirit talks to her. When Divorce Court continues, is Dana communicating with a spirit? She said that the Spirit told her that I had had a bisectomy, and I said, you know what? You better stop listening to that Spirit. That Spirit be lying to me. <laughs> If you would like your case heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com and follow us on Twitter at Divorce Court. Divorce Court returns with the case of Dana Harris, who has not seen her husband in two years. And what is the truth about how Dana and Daryl came to be husband and wife? I am in stage five of chronic kidney disease. But we didn't And know. I just, wait a minute. And I had just come through, I just went through a, a, a terrible relationship. So I was damaged before she even met me. She wanted to have a baby. I'm 58 years old. Right. I'm not gonna have a, a baby. She wanted to have a baby. I told her, I said, Dana, I don't want to raise any more children like that. And, and mm -mm. I kept telling her that. Then I finally, I, I, I said, you know what? I had a bisectomy. And so when I told her I had a bisectomy, she just lost, she just really blew it. I didn't have a bisectomy. And she said that the spirit told her that I had had a bisectomy. <laughs> and that's how she knew it all the time and that she no. was really upset about it. And I said, you know what? You better stop listening to that spirit because that spirit be lying to you. <laughs> okay, okay. Can, can, can I get those papers okay. back? Is this the only one I have? Yes, now, but thank you. Having exchanged what I like about you and what I don't like you seems to support her version of the story that, in fact, you did make plans to become her husband yes. because you wouldn't have done yes. that yes. in anticipation of marriage. That was yes. way after the fact. That we were oh, already so this married. Is after you were married. Yes. No, no, did this no, happen no, no, no. after you were no, married? No, ma'am. No, ma you, 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 you have the initial email from Daryl. It was dated October, one month before we got married. And again, with all due respect to Daryl, uh, Judge, and maybe his memory has been selective, but mine is very sharp and detailed. Mm -hmm. He asked me to marry him. I would look like a fool marrying somebody mm -hmm. that, you know, didn't want to marry me. But I was not desperate. Me. I was 49. How can you marry somebody that you don't know? Well, you well, did. In my spirit. I just, you keep, it, it's, you keep a, I did, but about... under the rest. You got to understand that I, had, I, I am in stage five of chronic kidney disease. But we didn't And know. I just, wait a minute. And I had just come through, I just went through a, 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 a terrible relationship. So I was damaged before she even met me. Yeah. You know, I had been damaged yeah. Yeah. already. Mm -hmm. But the thing is that I, I was in total control of my senses, and I know that I wasn't about to get married. I lived in Honolulu, come on. In the interim, before he joined me a few months later, he shipped all of his personal belongings to Atlanta to ensure to me that he was going to come. Now, why would you, honey, ship all of your personal, including the studio equipment that he loves, if you were, in fact, not going to come to Georgia and live with me as man and wife? Outstanding inquiry. Wait a minute. Now, after we were married and my contractual obligation was over, I did not want to appear to be a shallow person. So I, 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 was, I was going there to, to be with her. I was already married to her. So I was going there so to be there and try to make So in order not to appear shallow, yes. you shipped all your stuff to your wife y yes, because to make I had... it seem like you were really going to show? No, 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 I, I was going to show. He did because show. Because this is, this is months later. I had started selling my stuff on Craigslist and everything, sold, e sold everything. And so I was going out to join her to try to make things work. When Divorce Court continues, was Dana trying to perform an exorcism on Daryl? She takes me and she pins me up against the wall that like this, right? True. And then her that hand, okay, then her other hand is up no, under my neck. No, that is not true. Wait, then her other hand is up. <laughs> hang on, Then her other hand is up under my neck like no. this, so my feet are six no. inches off the ground. No. She has this big Bible, and she's hitting me in the head with like, bang, come out of him, Satan. <laughs> no. 
Divorce Court returns with the case of Dana Carter, who has not seen her husband since he fled their home two years ago, but who wants to know if her marriage can be saved. What was the situation when you got there? It was crazy. We, didn't, we did not have our own place to live. We lived with another family that were, had kids, and they were, they were involved in all kind of other stuff that I just was not used to living with a whole bunch of people like that. Can I address I, I, that, please? Please. Judge. I was a, I was forced to be a successful real estate agent. Right. I was making eighty thousand dollars a year. I knew that once his career stopped, that we were going to depend on my income until Daryl and I could start another business, which later on we did. It was successful, mm -hmm. the barbecue business, until we found out he was ill. So when he came there, the market had crashed. It took him four mm -hmm. months. I went from eighty thousand dollars to about eight thousand sure. poverty level. Sure, it was a significant shock to us. And my girlfriend had a uh, in-law suite separate from the house. She said, "Stay here." Daryl kept saying, "Well, you can pick out another place for us," but I wanted to give him the courtesy and respect as my new husband to pick it out. Not just because I'm a realtor. Let's do this thing together. Because we're married. Yes, ma'am. And that's what happened. But I didn't know her. Her teenagers were kind of wild, like teenagers. And Daryl told me things because I, you know, I, I tend to be a little green about what the kids were telling him. The kids love him. He's a Pied Piper. They love him. And, and so that's when he said, what did you get me into? I'm like, what? We were in one of the most affluent areas of Atlanta, Peachtree City. But, like, he did, but he didn't enjoy the, the specific environment that he was in with the children and all that, which you can understand. I yes, mean, it, yes, you know. yeah, well, they, the, the teenagers were separate. But that was just temporarily, because within a matter of a few months or so, we went to list one of my properties. Daryl fell in love with it. Wait, um, wait, wait, wait. Okay. What about, he fell when did, well, let what, me ask you wait, this. Wait, wait, can when I say did, something? Yeah, well, go ahead, and then I got to ask okay. a question, because I'm... What, what, about, what about the second place we moved into with the, with the, with the nudist Yeah, well, well, I said within months. We didn't with know an, it. With a nudist? We man. Were, yeah, we were yes. renting a room from a guy. You moved into a house, a man who ran around nude? Yeah, he ran around <laughs> No, nude. no, no. At the swimming pool, uh, Judge, it was Craigslist. Now, you my husband. You're supposed to have my cover. We agreed. I got you But covered. I didn't know. My husband told me the, he felt like the man was after me. And I was green. He was. I didn't think he was. Mr. Carter, of course, so far, what I'm seeing is I'm not quite sure how you got married, but you did. Yeah. I'm not either. And, 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 and then <laughs> once you got married, you, you moved down there, economic hardship occurred. Yes. You went, you went from one uncomfortable circumstance to another as a function of all that problem. Yes. Yes. Did that, is that what initially caused, caused the friction between the two of you? No. Mm -mm. See, um, my wife is very controlling, totally controlling. Mm. And she, okay. uh, she, she will hit. She would hit. And one instance was um, um, I found this, this box of, of cake and, remember that? Cake and. It, it, uh, tell me. Cake and. What? Candy. Right. Up under the bed. Right. And so I was on her case. Oh my God. I was on her case about the cake and candy. So she gets mad at me and says, you know what? It's the devil that makes you do that. And this, she takes me and she pins me up against. The wall that like this, right? True. And then no, her hand, okay. Then her other hand is up no, under my neck. No, that is not true. Wait, then her other hand is up. up. <laughs> hang on. Then hang her on. other hand is up under my neck like no. this, so my feet are six no. inches off the ground. No. She has this big Bible, and she's hitting me in the head with like, bang, come out of him, Satan. <laughs> bang, come out of him, Satan. And tomorrow, Daryl uses Dana's desire to have kids to hatch a plan of escape. One of my friends from Hawaii, okay, that calls me. But she inter intercepted the telephone call. You know you did. Mm -hmm. Intercepted the telephone call and started talking to him. And he says, you know, we're finna have a baby and we'll give you this baby. Nobody's gonna just give nobody no baby. I knew they weren't gonna give us that baby. But Dana's detective skills give her a clue that something isn't right. She asked me, could he go? And I said, you have to be back in 10 uh, days because you'll be out of your medication. That's mm -hmm. his life. Right. And I reconfirmed with the airlines, there was a one-way ticket. That's when I knew something was wrong.